Speaking of all of this and yeah. see-through of everything, let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen about the new war on terror that the domestic extremism program the Biden administration is launching. There's some really troubling details. So New York Times here is reporting around the new domestic extremism strategy. And uh, look, honestly, this should scare the hell out of you. They unveiled a, quote, national strategy to combat domestic extremism, calling for, listen to this, Aggressive steps such as hiring more intelligence analysts and screening government employees for ties to hate groups. A 32 page plan highlights a shift in the government's approach for counterterrorism. Now, why should you really be terrified? Number one, as we told you, this will be used as a guide in order to expand the powers of the intelligence state 100%. But even worse is that they are actually explicitly calling for in this plan using the organs of the post 9-11 terror state and to terror surveillance and turning it directly on American citizens. A great part of our Rogan episode was actually when we were explaining this to Joe and Joe was like, wait, who defines domestic extremism? And we were like, yeah, Joe, that's exactly. The question. That's the that's million, the oh, actually multi-billion dollar yeah, question, isn't it? it. The billion it. dollar question is who defines domestic extremism? The, whoever's in the government. And as you rightfully pointed out, Trump wanted to declare Antifa a domestic terrorist organization whenever he was in office, which would have given him massive surveillance powers over that group. People, I think, rightfully called that out at the time. And now, what 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 is domestic extremism? Is it, you know, flying a flag? Uh, you know, is it uh, wearing a mask or not wearing a mask whenever you're supposedly supposed to wear a mask? Like, who defines these things? And you can make it so that the FBI can essentially do whatever it would like. And this leads to some very, very, very dangerous places in which you have FBI agents will be deliberately instigating or pushing some American citizens who they seem as, you know, possibly radicalizable or whatever, yes. and then push them right up to the door of entrapment and boom, you're going to jail. This is basically what a police state looks like in terms of past authoritarian regimes. And this is the type of thing where it should really, really worry you because the entire Democratic and Republican establishment is basically behind expanding the surveillance state for these purposes. Yes. This is what we've been warning about the whole time. And um, I think a lot of people on the left could see these abuses really clearly when it came to targeting Muslims and the war on terror. Right. And I don't want to cherry pick here. I did a whole thing back at Rising about the Herald Square it was a great bomber. Yeah. And this was all revealed by the New York Times, right? This wasn't some like weird left-wing rag or whatever that was coming up with this. The FBI for informant basically radicalized this young man, mm -hmm. talked him into getting involved with the plot. The last minute, he's saying, I, I don't really, I don't want to be a part of this. He agrees sort of to serve as a scout and even says, and this is the kind of hardened criminal he was, he was like, but I have to check with my mom. And this isn't just one instance. The Intercept has done a great job of cataloging each one of these terrorism charges associated with the 9-11 inspired war on terror. And very few of them were actually plots that would have organically happened on their own that were disrupted by law enforcement. Overwhelmingly, the, the charges were a stretch or it was effectively plotted by FBI informants. And in fact, and this is, this is uncomfortable to talk about, there are signs that this is already being applied. Those same tactics are still, are already being applied increasingly to citizens who are involved in, you know, right-wing movements that I want nothing to do with, white supremacist movements. I mean, these are not good things. These are hideous ideologies. I want to be totally clear about that. But Jackman actually had a piece a while back about, hey, you know, how much was the FBI involved in plotting this um, Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping scheme, which again was abhorrent. Yep. Um, some of those involved were allegedly on their way to actually kidnap her. They had a horrible plan. But also a number of the people that were in the car when they stopped them were FBI informants. So we need to keep asking the question because here's the thing. First of all, if you have constant news of these plots being disrupted, like the Herald Square thing, mm -hmm. you see the Herald Square bombing plot disrupting, you're like, oh my God, that's such a big subway station. I lived in New York at the time. I was like, wow, this is really it's scary. It's like the second most popular subway station in the country. This I mean, is, in New York. Right. Yeah. This is crazy. So it's very effective at keeping the population in fear. Like these plots are unfolding all around yeah. us and thank God that they're disrupting them. Meanwhile, the politicians get to have a press conference and say, we disrupted this bombing plot. It serves their career. Right. The FBI informants are involved. We're getting paid. It serves their career. Whoever's in charge of that operation, it serves them. They ascend up the ranks. 
And so it becomes this industry of is essentially manufacturing plots that you can then go in and pretend to disrupt. And those are the exact tactics that we're talking about expanding in increasingly on our soil to more of our citizens, to whoever that government at that point, whether it's Joe Biden now or Donald Trump in the past or potentially freaking Donald Trump again, whoever they decide they don't like and want to create a narrative about how they're the gravest threat to American lives. So that's why this stuff is so dangerous. Look, if people are plotting to, you know, plant bombs right. or engage in like go disrupt that, deal with it. Law enforcement already has all of the tools that they need. They already have all of kidnapping is already illegal, guys. <laughs> Planting bombs already illegal. You don't need additional laws, you don't need additional tools. They have so much money and resources already. We've been warning about this from the very beginning because we could see the trajectory that it's going on. And especially when liberals have lionized people like John Brennan and the national security state is like above reproach now among some in um, sort of establishment democratic circles. And so that just gives them the ability to claim more and more power, more surveillance ability into your life or whoever they decide that they want to go after and look into their activities. We should all be completely disgusted by white supremacists, and we should also jealously guard our civil liberties. Yeah, and you know, to this point, I was talking earlier about defining extremism, as we saw with the Islamic extremism. Well, look at this one. Extremists, quote, this is according to their assessment, continue to be motivated by narratives of fraud in the recent general election, the emboldening impact of the violent breach of the Capitol, and conditions related to the COVID-19 pandemic and conspiracy theories promoting violence. Okay, Motivated, motivated by narratives of fraud in the recent general election. I thought that the narrative of fraud was bad. That's what we called stop the steal out from the very beginning. Let's actually see. That's one third of the U.S. population, maybe one quarter, actually, if we're going to be charitable and say that some of the people who are on board the whole like full blown Trump train don't actually believe it was stolen or just saying so because Trump says it. Let's say a quarter of the U.S. population. So now a quarter of the U.S. population are extremists. And listen, I think it's bad. I think it's dangerous. I blame Trump. I blame a lot like Rush Limbaugh type people for pushing this stuff. But that doesn't mean that they're terrorists. And look at this one. Conditions related to the COVID-19 pandemic and conspiracy theories promoting violence. So what does that mean? Conditions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. As I said, would that encompass uh, anti-lockdown protests? Go and think about the how crazy the country was. What was it? May of 2020, whenever those people, so there, and some of it was astroturfed. You know, these anti-mask protests, anti-lockdown protests, mm, yeah. all this are they going to be infiltrated or organized by the FBI? I mean, technically, some of them did promote violence. You know, some of them even had guns. Like, I mean, it's a free country. A lot of these places are pro 2 a states. But does that mean that they have to be surveilled? Or does that mean that they would be liable under this new domestic extremism initiative? You see how it gets real dicey real quickly whenever you start to talk about regular American citizens and not necessarily like a fringe ideology. This is where, you know, you could begin to see the beginnings of more police state action, more authoritarian action. Oh, and nobody is defending many of these groups. Like we said, who, ha who hates the, the fr uh, election fraud people more than us? No one, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because many of these people are American. And actually, if you do this, it will just get 10 times worse. Using the organs of the state against so large of a part of your population and trying to criminalize them, it is not going to work. And if it does, that's even more dangerous. So more a couple dangerous. things. Number one, look, you shouldn't, this should just be about principle. It mm. shouldn't be about your team. And so if someone is really comfortable calling out like, you know, FBI infiltration and the Trump administration and to these right wing groups, but they got nothing to say about what was during, done during the war on terror. They're just serving a partisan agenda. Yeah. And the same thing on the other side. If you were concerned about these civil liberties during the war on terror and their application to Muslims, you should be equally, if not more concerned now. Right. So first of all, that's just use that as a little metric to see who's actually serious about the principles versus who's just carrying water for one team or ideology or another. Absolutely. Another thing, I actually thought that exchange with Joe during the podcast was really important because he said January 6th was a really, that's yeah. actually really important to get the roots of what happened there. And he's 100% right. The problem is that we know in Washington, a January 6th commission is gonna come to no useful conclusion because if you actually want to get to the core of how something so heinous and ugly mm -hmm. could happen in America, it implicates far too many 
of the political class in Washington to include Democrats. And so that piece of like, how did we get here? And how can we avoid getting here again? Because that's what Joe says. Look, yes. sometimes when these things start to happen, then it just becomes a thing that happens. And we all get used to like, oh, citizens just march on the Capitol mm. and like try to murder lawmakers on a regular basis. Those sorts of things can't be allowed to go unchecked and just become normalized in our politics. He's 100% right about that. The problem is that this, this whole narrative, rather than being used to get to the root causes of what the hell is going wrong in this country and the core rot that we try our best to speak to here every day, all it's being used is as a partisan talking point to help win electoral seats in the midterms and even more nefarious to expand the surveillance state, to further expand the national security state, to grab power from you and take it for themselves once again. Yeah, and actually that exchange revealed something else. Joe was a good faith guy who was like, wait, I was horrified by January 6th. Why wouldn't you want to get to the bottom of it? Yeah. Right? And so what the politicians do is they weaponize that good faith instinct. And yeah. that's what we were saying. We were like, look, man, we don't think, like, it think it's bad. Yeah. But we know how DC commissions work. For example, Anybody want to tell me with a straight face the Benghazi Commission was really about getting to the bottom of what happened on Benghazi? No, it was about destroying Hillary, and it became a culture war issue, and it became like this whole thing. The 9-11 Commission was another example. Was the 9-11 Commission really to find out what happened with bin Laden and with 9-11, or was it just a project in order to cover up for all the failures of the intelligence community and give them billions and billions and billions of more dollars and eventually invade Iraq? Every single one of these things, whenever they become political, they do not serve any interest. They have to actually cover up the complicity, like you're saying, of the political class. And then... What's worse is that they weaponize people like Joe, normal people, who are like, hey, I was horrified by January 6th. How dare you say we don't need a January 6th commission? I'm not saying it because I don't want to get to the bottom of it, and I don't want to examine it. If there was a real effort, I would be all in. But guess what? We know how DC works. We know how they're going to use it. This is exactly what? In order to expand the powers of the national security state amongst huge, amongst huge swaths of American society, which is totally unacceptable. Yeah.